Welcome to Shopstick Travel, I'm Luke Martin, and in today's episode, I'm in Cebu City, the largest city in the center of Visayas, a group of islands that are a part of the 7,000 plus island archipelago we know as the Philippines. And in my opinion, the Philippines is the most underrated destination for food in Asia. So in today's episode, I'm meeting up with a local, my friend Paolo. He's gonna be taking me around, showing me the different influences in the food here in the Philippines, tasting all kinds of Cebuano, street foods. It's going to be a great episode. I'm so pumped to be back in the Philippines. Make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Filipino food. So I'm here with Paolo. I'm pumped to be here. So last time I was in the Philippines, I was only in Manila, and everybody told me, you gotta go to Cebu. That's a, a place of food, heritage, and history. Mm -hmm. So we welcome you to Cebu. We're here at Eket Food House, so uh, we're gonna have the famous pochero here. Used to be just a little hole in the wall store for soup. Now it's, it's Eket. Yeah, let's go see it. Check it out. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> We've got a massive pot of the, this is the pochero here, That's yeah? the pochero right there. Yeah. So that's uh, nothing but beef being brewed over and stewing yeah, for yeah, how many yeah. hours? Cooking like, on wood fire too. Mm -hmm. I see some pieces of corn floating in there and she's using a little bit of the broth to kind of stoke the fire and uh, get those flames going up. She get out there. You see how that oh, yeah. effect goes? Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. That adds to the, the beautiful adds to touch. the flavor. Yeah, sure. All right. This place is uh, mostly known for its pochero, mm -hmm. which is the, the beef stew basically. But at the same time, it's a locally known carinderia. It's a go-to restaurant place for the community. So most of these places um, are known for one particular uh, food, but they also have yeah. a lot of different options. <laughs> Alright Paolo, we've got our pochero here. It's like a beef stew. The yes. origins come from Spain, but it's very Filipino. Very Filipino, yeah. very Bisaya particularly for the pochero. Every region of uh, the Philippines, they have their own version of pochero or bulalo for some even. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, most of the main ingredients are kind of the same. You yeah, have your yeah. beef, and you have all your different vegetables that you can find. It's, it's really um, how Cebu used to be such a historical point. Uh, for many different cultures and many different culinary ingredients from, from other people. Okay. So we try to mix it and match it and make it our own. So there's bone, there's cartilage, there's tons of beef. And it's still pretty clear broth. Though. Yes. It's not like a super thick broth or anything. You see how, how tender it is? Look at that meat. Add in the soup too okay. and have it, yeah. have it like really Get it soupy. saturated, yeah. yeah. Cheers, man. Welcome to Cebu. Oh, yeah. mm. That's mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Super tender. So tender. The corn grits it. is like a really unique texture. It's, exactly. it's like a, a tiny piece of rice is what it feels yeah. like. And the broth is quite salty actually, but really beefy. So really you, can, beefy. you can try it, uh, put in a little bit of the, wow. the beef with a little bit of the ginamos of your shrimp. Okay, let's try it, let's try it. Grab some of the ginamos. Okay, Put shrimp it based. on, right? All right, put it on the your, color of that shrimp right? base is unique. It's it's pretty special for here too. And then you get the, that, that bite of saltiness and beefiness in one bite. Sure. Go. Mm. That's mm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Soup's perfect too. That's man. phenomenal. That's perfect breakfast. Right? Feels light, healthy. That beef is just so tender. That's what this place is known for too, so. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's good. Yeah. Have, have some more, man. <laughs> so we've also got some corn in here, and I'm following by example. Yep. You went yep. right in with the fingers. I, that's like probably one of the first things I, 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 I really love it. about the, the butchero, the yeah. corn. Each bite has the flavor of the whole bowl. Yeah. It's good. It's like a sweet, sweet corn, yeah. All right, right. Mm -hmm. and we've also got, let's stick some calamansi here. And yeah, so that's, chili. Uh, that's some lime, and, and you got your calamansi and, okay. and chili, and if you want to mix that with your guinamos. Oh man, this is just comfort food. Serious comfort food. I hope you're liking the food and the, the experience that you have here in Cebu. Yeah, it's Hello. totally different than Manila. Hey, we have, we have toho, just in case. Oh, look at want. this. Street food yeah, right there. Street food right there. Hey, we can get one. Yeah. Chip, and the Doha dan chip. Doha. 
Look at this. He's selling it right off right? The, the shoulder. That's a <laughs> bonus. It's like our dessert. Exactly. That's what you can expect from Cebu. Definitely a place unlike Manila. Yeah, yeah. Not as hectic. Wow, oh, look at this. Good this is tahok. Tahok. It's, tahok. Uh, it's, it's soy. Soy? Okay, so it's soy it's milk. Sweet. Wow. It's very fresh because it's, it's uh, nice and hot. Power food. Wow, power food. I love it. Looks like he's also put some like little balls in the bottom yes, there. Little pearls. Little, little pearls. pearls. Yeah, okay. Little sagu. So perfect way to end our breakfast. <laughs> but where are we off to next? We've got a big day to eat. Right, huh? so we're trying to plot out a very distinct uh, Cebuano culinary tour for Good. you. Right, so we're going to go to the downtown area, try to look for uh, another known. Um, uh, soup place there, yep. fish soups. Get your get your stomach ready for the whole day. <laughs> let's do okay? it. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, where are we, Paolo? This is pretty hardcore. Yes, this is uh, the downtown area here in Cebu. We're yeah. in, in uh, near Pasil. Mm -hmm. This is Esmin's Carinderia, the very notorious Esmin's Carinderia. And they're serving linarang. linarang. Yeah, which is a Visaya dish, right? Yes, uh, fish stew. Fish that's, stew. That's what you have, uh, nothing but fish, vegetables. The main ingredient is the, the fish. Okay. Different kinds of fish, yeah. but the one they have here is porcupine fish. Porcupine fish. Puffer, that's that's pretty looks pretty like crazy. a puffer fish. They have uh, on display, right? Yeah, they've got the it on display too. there. Uh, that's, the, that's the fish so you're gonna get the taste loop. See, they're adding oh, a little yeah. bit more. Adding more ingredients. You got the ingredients, the vegetables, tomatoes, the tomato. It's green onions. Uh, tomato base too. So yep. you get the richness of the flavor from There's the vegetables. There's chilies in there. Yes. There's all kinds of different things. I've never had porcupine fish before, let's, so it's gonna be my first time. Let's have it here today. This is just the craziest setup. Cooking on wood you fire get the too. Heat, wood yeah, you fire. get the heat coming. The smoke. So this Garandaria has been around for 60 years. We're waiting for them to finish cooking uh, the final pot. Uh, this is the sixth one that they've cooked today. So it's absolutely bonkers here. Super busy and uh, I'm pumped to try it out. It's supposed to be really good. Wow. So this is the liver? The liver, yeah. The liver of the porcupine fish. That the is fish. quite a unique ingredient. Check that out, the liver. Wow. And then we've got two bowls of the linarang. I guess this one's this with- This is the linarang with the soup. Okay. Just the soup. Just the soup and yeah, then with most the of the fish. Yeah, and there's the liver. Look at that. All right, man, let's just try this broth first Please of have all. Please have yeah. a taste of yeah. the linarang soup. Oh, wow. Soup. Nice and sour. You can taste the fish mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. There's coconut milk in there, and yep. it's definitely got some heat and some spiciness too. It reminds me of sinigang a little yes, bit, right? It does. Because of the mix of the vegetables and yep. all of that, you get that same flavor, but at the same time, the distinctness of the fish. Yeah, the is seafood really, flavor really is, comes out. is really good in there, yeah. So you pair that up with the mais still, because it's a perfect with the corn uh, grits. texture, the yep. corn grits still. Yep. All right, there's quite a few bones in here. Uh, he told me to watch it for the bones, the chef. Did, yep. But, uh, Paulo's an expert, so get, get he's going to help a, me get, get some Get yourself meat. a bite out of that. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of meat in here, but what is and there looks really nice and white. Okay, I got a good piece. And then mix it up with there we go. your corn grits. Yeah, put it on the corn grits. Get as much of the vegetable if you can, too. Yeah, oh yeah. Put a little bit of tomato in there, too. There you go. That's a good bite right yeah. there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's very fresh tasting. Like, it's yeah. not oily. At all. Plus the, the fact fish that the is, fish market is right by. The, yeah, the so fish market is nearby. Yeah. This is such a hardcore spot packed out with locals. It doesn't get more local than this. I love the flavor of that broth. Nice and sour. You get the sour. flavor in just one good bowl of everything. Um, it's such a very Cebuano flavor. Linarang. Yeah. Wow, what an atmosphere, man. Right? This is intense. That was some, some good linarang, huh? Right. Uh, yeah. That's what you can expect when it comes to uh, the downtown side of Cebu. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. we're at. I love the feeling, the intensity. So you, you really feel how busy it can get yeah, during yeah. lunchtime. So uh, head out to our next spot. Yeah, I heard the best way to get around town is in the jeepney. Of course. All that's right. a, it's very Filipino. So let's try to get to a jeepney stop in <laughs> the right way. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> good luck to us. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Let's go ride the jeep. We can wait right by the no stuffing. 
Right by the no stopping sign. All right. <laughs> so how does this work exactly? How do I know what jeepney I want to take? So we'll, we'll, we'll pick a particular one that's going to head our way, and then let's hail <laughs> one down best. and hope for the best. <laughs> okay. It's tilted. It's tilted on one way. Yeah, it's like this. <laughs> These are the newer ones. You're right. Yeah, I love the paint. The paint <laughs> is amazing. I like the paint job on this one yeah. too. Okay, let's do it. Go, bro. All right, where do we go? Let's hit. All right, we made it in the jeepney. This morning we saw the Spanish influence here in the Philippines with the pochero over 300 years colonization, but also there's a lot of American influence. These jeepneys, a lot of them were left behind from World War II. There was a surplus, they've been kind of uh, modified and Frankenstein together. And then with a beautiful paint job, and uh, this is the iconic symbol now of the Philippines, public transportation at least. Okay, so you hail a jeepney, yep. it stops pretty much everywhere, okay. anywhere, a jeepney stops. Yeah. And then you just get on and get off. And how do you let them know if you want to get off? Either you, you knock. Knock on the, the roof. Alright, so that means, yeah. that means we're here. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Let's go. We saw the Spanish influence this morning, the American influence in the jeepney. The other major one's gonna be the Chinese, right? We've come to this place, Chinese. Ngoyong. Ngong Yong? Ngoyong. 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 <laughs> okay. It's hard to pronounce the H somewhere there, but there's an H there. Somewhere. There is an H, okay. This is a Cebuano take on a, a Chinese recipe that eventually, throughout time, it became a very Cebuano uh, okay. uh, dish. So right? it's like a fried spring roll. It's like a spring roll, but a instead of, it's like a lumpia yeah, for yeah. Filipinos, but instead of having meat inside, there's ubud or bamboo sprout sometimes. Bamboo, okay. But it, it's not, now the, the most common recipe is vegetables inside. That's ubud. Okay, this right? place is super popular, I know that. Yes, this Let's is a spot it. to go if you if you eat it here in Cebu. And you can only find moyong here in Cebu. Really? Yes. All right, well then That's we have right. to try it. Let's go. Let's go. So it's kind of self-service. You just take this and uh, write how many you want for, uh, no idea how to spell this. Nong yong. How, no do, yong. how do you spell that? N. No. <laughs> yong. N. No yong. Yeah, you got the H there. Right? <laughs> They're absolutely massive. Look at those in there. Wow. And that's why uh, you gotta come to this place because of those, even though they have other things, but the no yong. You gotta try it. Alright. That is heavy. There's only four in there. Holy smokes. All right, man, we've got our nyong nyong. Oh, no, almost, no, almost, 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 almost got closer, it. right? Yeah, yeah. So it's served with this uh, spicy, sweet looking sauce. You can see the chilies there yeah, too. Yeah, I can so see some chilies really floating spicy. in there. And then what do we got here in this little wrapped up? This is the, what we call busuk. This is uh, okay. hanging rice. Okay, yeah, I can see so the it's, rice it's in really, there. Uh, it's basically rice that's really packed in. Grab one of the pieces over there if Okay, you oh, it's super ah, dense, super yeah. dense, yeah. And then get grab one of your moyongs, take right. a bite. Go for a dip. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I love that sauce. It's definitely got some heat to it. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of sourness too. And then the rice really nice. balances it out yeah. too. Because it's a little bit oily. Wow, that's a serious uh, spring roll. Mm -hmm. oh. That is like the perfect after drinking snack I could eat. More than one of these. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. Yum. I love it. Nice. The sauce really makes it for me. It's got all the flavor. And honestly, it reminds me of like American Chinese food or Canadian Chinese food. Mm -hmm. Greasy and good. Yum. My fingers are super greasy. That's a good meal? <laughs> yeah, good meal. Let's eat some more greasy stuff. Oh yeah, there's lots to eat here. Let's go. Yeah, let's go.
All right, man, what do we got here? We're Ooh. at this place called Punko Punko Safuente. Yeah, and yes. what does Punko Punko mean? Punko Punko is literally sit sit. Sit sit? Okay, well, we're, we're doing down. it. Okay, so we just ordered up something here. What do we got here, Paula? This is the Ginabot. Ginabot. So Which is uh, pig intestine. Pig intestine, pig mesentery. It's a yes. special cut of the intestine. We also, you also call it sweet flour, right? Sweet flour. Yeah, so it's been deep fried, super crunchy, crispy looking. How, how do we eat this? I'm guessing we're in the Philippines. I'm guessing it's with vinegar. It's with vinegar. <laughs> you add in a little bit of onions, a yeah. little bit of chili, some salt in there. That sounds you good. Dip in the uh, Ginabot into your mouth straight with another <laughs> piece of puso which is the rice yeah yeah okay it's a perfect bite all right let's dig in all right thank you so he's given us this bag which is i guess used as a glove yes yeah it so doubles as a glove that's fine to keep your hands clean yep. while you're eating and we also got the vinegar here with some chilies some onions which is looking really good mm -hmm. chili it, spicy it is, it, be careful it spicy. i'm coming from thailand man i'm okay well, then again you know <laughs> you got practice see how does that? Is it, is it like an explosion in your mouth? Yeah. It's so funky. Yeah. It's pretty much just like fried nothing. It's just like a really crunchy. It's all the flavors coming from those onions, yes. that vinegar. Yes. And I can hear the guys behind us. Every time a new customer comes in, they start going crazy. So are they? Is this one job, or are they working together, or no? There used to be different places for ginabutans or, or punko punko, mm. but now this particular spot got famous because they banded together. But they all come from different suppliers. They're different kitchens. Yeah, yeah. Who cook and yeah. then put so their food in. So they're competing with each other. Competing with each other. with each other. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So I mean, they all look like they've got good punko punko. That's why when people come in, they shout suki ki ki. Yeah, yeah. Ki. Come so here, give you, me your money. If you ask for more food, you say, Ke puno pa All right. Wow, I love it. I love the culture here. I love the, the food culture here in the Philippines. It's really unique, really crunchy. We're getting ready to eat some more. Oh, man. It's good, that right? is good. I need a beer. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> some of the pieces a little bit like chewier on the inside, and then some mm -hmm. are just really, really crispy. And uh, Paulo was just telling me they make their own vinegar here. It goes so well with the onions too. Can we ask him how do they? What's the best way to convince the customer to come to their stall? I think it's working. He's saying that, saying that the kinabo here is crunchy. Crunchy, extra crunchy here. Oh, I think it's gonna work. I think we might be scaring away the customers with our camera. I can feel my Good. cholesterol levels yeah. going up. <laughs> it's getting there. As soon as we left, the table's already taken. Where, where are you taking me now? now we got more food. We got more food. We're going to check out uh, some of the spots that you can find within the area. Okay. And then we're going to look for more food. All right, all right. Let's Keep go. it a secret. Let's go. All right, man, where have you brought me? All I've got here is the biggest beer bottle I've ever mm -hmm. seen, and it says extra strong. Yes, it on is. The front. We've got Red Horse. This is um, our introduction to you, Luke, okay. of the, the Red Horse beer. It's a, a favorite here in the Philippines, yeah. of course, Look Red Horse. Size that thing. All right, so nice. spill the beans. What? Where have you brought me? So we're here at Azul. Uh, Azul's Tuslubua. Tuslubua is a, a local street food that started out in the market areas in the downtown where people used to just put in pig brains inside a wok full of hot oil. Okay. And then people just buy puso. Right. And then they dip the rice in into the, the bubbles of the brains. Okay. Right? That's why it's called tuslub, which is to, to dip. Yeah. And bua is bubbles. All right, we've sauteed the onions. What's this brain going in now? Now this is a. Uh, the pig brain. Okay. Of course, it's oh, frozen still. Only a little yes. bit, huh? Just a little bit for now. So this is the brain, the pig stock. brain stock. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So we got with, onions. We've got with uh, parts of big pig, pig brain there at the bottom too. Soy sauce in there, right? Yeah, soy and, sauce uh, and onions. A little bit of oil. Yes. All right. Oh, and you also put some liver in there too. There's some liver there too. Look at that. It's thickening right up. Yes. That's that's the pig brain right there. Imagine I that. love the DIY. Right? Oh yeah, that's starting to look real good actually. What do we got here? Chicharron? This is chicharron just to add a little bit of a crunch. A little pork crackling. Add more, more texture. Mm -hmm. Just put that in there. Because we're, we're just about done actually. You can okay. actually start tasting that already. We've got the pusut. Pusut. Chef Paolo mm -hmm. has uh, prepared our tuslub bua. So that's the bua. The the this is the bubbles. act of doing the tuslub. Mm -hmm. so okay, tuslub. Put dip it, it in, in yeah. dip it in there. 
Like look you see, that. Yeah, look at that, yeah. Oh, wow. So you get a mixture of everything, yeah. taking a huge bite. Champion. Oh, yep, that's it. That's the snubuat for that's you. Awesome. No weird flavor at all. No. Mm, the texture with the rice, it just perfectly laps it up. Mm -hmm. And then it's got some onion in there, some soy in there. It's starting to get a little bit crispy on the bottom. Very smooth texture. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can totally get right? down with this. I could sit here, drink beer. You can add a little bit more dip. garlic. Oh. Just a little finish there. Oh, wow. You guys know me. I'm not a huge brain or organ fan, but that was seriously good. Like, no joke, amazing flavor. We completely polished it off, and uh, the food tour continues here in Cebu. Let's go. Nighttime now, I can feel the energy. Cebu really comes alive at night. I can feel it, right? Especially if you take a whiff of the air, yeah. it smells nothing but food. Yeah, exactly. And we've come to an area of town called Tisa, uh, a part of uh, Cebu City, mm -hmm. where there's a street that offers non-stop shomai. Shomai, so Chinese style dim sum almost, and, and you can see it right here steaming away. They've got a big basket full of it. So there's actually two different kinds, Paolo. That's well, Japanese shomai and regular pork shomai. It's just constant uh, flow of people buying these shomai. Look at these. All right, we're going to order some up. Try it out. It's served with a yes, nice it's served sauce. with nothing, but this is the best chili oil that you can get. Chili oil, right on. That's of course, it goes name. perfect with puso still. <laughs> really? Yes. All right, eating it with rice. Yes. Let's try it out. You can find shomai everywhere nowadays. Mm -hmm. But it's within this street that people go to all the way till the wee hours of the morning after a night out when you're drunk and you still come here and eat shomai with a chili sauce and fuso. Yeah, you weren't joking. That chili oil is good. Phenomenal. Right? So good. It's got a little bit of a tanginess. That's true. And then really soft meat on the inside. I think that's one of the things that set them apart mm -hmm. uh, from the, the different stalls that you can find in the street. It's the sauce. That sauce, yeah, you're totally right about that. That sauce makes this People eat that. so good. Oh, yeah. Like, eat it with rice by yeah, itself. Yeah. Straight up. Mm. <laughs> All right, man, another Cebu classic, the shomai. I got my chili pick out. <laughs> Look at this. He's taking the chili oil home. It's so that good. good. It's, it's golden so oil. Good. But I am hitting the wall here. I'm stuck. We got to go for dessert. Um, let's have some dessert. Paulo has brought me to Melton's, which is like the OG place for Halo Halo, which is the uh, quintessential Filipino dessert. We ordered one of these, the super special. All right, Paulo, what do we got here? I see some purple things, I see some green things, some pink things. You know what, Luke, to be honest with you, I don't know what that is. <laughs> no, seriously. This is the Filipino Halo Halo. Yeah. It's a, it's a novelty dessert that's become famous worldwide because it's just a mix of anything that you can put in inside a bowl that uh, tastes good and sweet yeah. and cold and refreshing. refreshing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, really a mix and match because that's what halo halo means. It's, it's really it means to mix it? To mix. So should I mix right? it up? You can mix it up. Yeah. So there's a, a foundation of ice. Shaved ice in the bottom. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, we can this, see it there. This here at Melton is a little bit different because I think they, they have a, a specialized system of the ice where they mix in the milk into the ice. Okay, so shaved they, milk. So it's kind of like shaved milk. Right, right? on. You go in there sure, too. Sure, man. There's Please. no way I can uh, finish this go myself. Go ahead, go I ahead. I love that purple It's a good bite, bang. right? Let's try it. Mmm. Mm. Good. Oh, right? It's not as sweet yeah. as the one I tried before. It's you good. get the contrast textures because yeah. of the cornflakes in there the too. The of the cornflakes yep. and some of the nuts too. Yep. And then you have some of the beans, a little bit of jelly there too. Yeah, yeah. Some gold even sometimes. Oh, so, I love how it's not too sweet because 
I remember when I was in Manila, I had one. It was much too sweet for me. Yeah. But this is like really uh, mild sweetness. You get your sweetness from, well, sometimes mm. you, they put in a lot of sugar in it, right? Yeah, yeah. But some of the establishments, they also have like, they focus on the, the flavor. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of the sweetness from the different fruits that you get or whatever you put in mm -hmm. inside into the, the whole bowl. So it's a, a really good mix. This has got to be the most famous. Filipino dessert yes, of all. Yes, yes, it is. Well, yes, it is. perfect way to end the day. Then, it's huh? become a, a huge uh, fad everywhere. Too, yeah, right? around especially the world. with the ube too. Oh yeah, so the, the purple color. So you get the color of everything. Definitely a perfect way to cap your uh, hot street food day sensation in here in Cebu, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially for a hot day like oh, this. Oh yeah, right on. Please enjoy, man. <laughs> Paolo? Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Super, thank you, man. Super welcome for being here. Yeah. I hope you enjoy it. I love Cebu. This is an incredible city. The food culture here is awesome. The people are so friendly. Huge thank you to Paolo for showing me around. Props, man. Props. Make sure to uh, subscribe. Can't wait to have you back here in Cebu, man. Yeah.